welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Today I want to get out a recipe that you can use on your Thanksgiving table. I'm going to try to do at least three recipes before the Thanksgiving holidays. A lot of people have asked me about my dressing recipe, but if you will look in my Thanksgiving part five, you will find how to make dressing not stuffing but the dressing the old-fashioned way so that's going to be that's already posted i posted it maybe about two three years ago but it's in my thanksgiving day part five if you want to look that up now today i'm going to be baking one of the cakes that i'm going to show you how to bake before the thanksgiving holiday i don't very rarely you will watch me or you will see me do cakes. The reason be is because the measurements have to be followed precisely. If they are not, it's a possibility that your cake will mess up and I don't want to take the blame for that. So if you follow the recipe that I give you exactly like I tell you, your cake should be fine. The cake for today is going to be a red velvet cake that's right red velvet cake and I know that cake requires a little bit more than just your normal cake but I can get you through this the first thing you're going to need to do is to flour and grease your cake pan now I'm using a 10 inch cake pan what you do is you take some fresh cooking oil I wouldn't suggest that you use old cooking oil the ones that you fried chicken or pork chops in like you see that I keep the kettle on my stove take fresh cooking oil and you can finger spread it all over your cake pan and all around the edges of your cake pan once you do that then you're going to take some flour whether it be all-purpose flour whatever type you have and you're going to put some in the pan and then you're going to shake it around like that all over the bottom of the pan make certain that you hit every crease then you're going to take it around like this to make certain that you hit the sides of the cake pan. Why do you do that? You do that because you don't want your cake to stick. You don't want to have any problems when this cake gets ready to be unmold from this cake pan. That's the first thing. Now the ingredients that we're going to need to make this very delicious cake are going to be as follows. You're going to need sugar, buttermilk, vinegar, cake flour, butter, soda, baking soda, chocolate, I'm using Hershey's chocolate, you can use any kind you want, red food coloring, this is one ounce, vanilla flavor, salt, and eggs. Now, whenever you see me baking a cake, you will always see two ingredients that's a must-have when I'm baking a cake. That is Swan's Down Cake Flour and Land of Lake Butter. Those are the two ingredients that's a must. I feel like this makes your cake fluffier, and I know that this makes your cake taste a whole lot better than just any other blend of butter that you can get. Now, that's what you're going to need to bake the cake. When you get ready to make the frosting, this is what we will need. We will need the powdered sugar. This is confectionery powdered sugar. You can use this. This is optional, but I love this on my red velvet cake. This is some crushed pecans, and you crush them as fine as you can because you want that to go in your icing. You're going to need a half cup of cold water, cornstarch, again, land of lake butter, and I think I'm going to put just a little twist on this cake, and that's going to be some cream cheese. Because I want to try it with the cream cheese. Normally I just do it with these ingredients. But this time I think I'm going to put a little bit of cream cheese in it. And I'll tell you how it really tastes. Now, those are all the great ingredients you're going to need. I'm going to go away, get everything prepared, set up, and I'll meet you at my mixer. Be right back. Alrighty, now I have my butter in here. And this is one um, half a cup of butter, which is basically one stick. So I'm going to start it. Now, I hope you can hear me over my blender. The one thing about cakes that really make your cakes turn out really, really good is the blending together of your butter and your sugar. This is white granulated. Now, I'm going to put the recipe at the bottom for this cake. But right now, I'm just showing you technique. So I'm going to go ahead and put this butter, I'm sorry, put this uh, sugar in with the butter and I'm going to allow it to whip together until it's just um, 
very whipped up. Okay? So that should take only a few minutes. Now, once I get through putting this up, I'm going to allow this to go ahead and blend while I show you another part of this. Now here is my two and a half cups of flour. While I'm allowing that to blend, I'm going to go ahead and add all of my dry ingredients. So here you have my two and a half cups of flour. And to that, I'm going to add three and a half tablespoons of the cocoa. I'm going to stir that in well. This is all of my dry ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and add my baking soda. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. Now, I'm going to mix all of these ingredients. Okay, now I'm going to set that aside. And now I'm going to put in what's going to bring the fluffiness into this. I'm going to put in my eggs one at a time. Okay. Now, I've already taken out stop my blender for a little while just to bring it down and it's always if you want really good cakes that's the best way to do it your cream your butter and your sugar and then you add your eggs one at a time just to get that real fluffiness that you're looking for so I'm allowed it to blend for a few minutes and as you can see I mixed up all of my dry ingredients and I'm going to alternate putting in my one cup of buttermilk and my uh, mixed dry ingredients. So what I'm going to do when I get ready to put this in is I'm going to put a little bit of this and then I'm going to put a little bit of that. And I'm going to keep on alternating with this. Okay. Now I'm going to add my second egg because I had two eggs, remember. So I'm going to add my second egg to that. And allow that just to fluff up. I'm going to stop my mixer. Go around my mixer wall. And get everything down. Where my mixer can continue to blend it. Put it back and continue. Now I have this on the medium speed. At first I had it on the low speed, but I changed it and I put it on the medium speed. Now if you if you follow when you're adding your oils, your butter, any of those uh, type things in your sugar. If you blend that together, you're always going to have a good cake. Your cake is always going to come out good. You won't get those knots or those lumps that you see sometimes when you um, when you bake your cake. If you're not experienced with, you know, baking. So now if you can look at that, that has fluffed up. So I'm going to stop it and just to show you what it looks like. See that? It's fluffy. That's the way you want it. So now I'm going to continue on with my ingredients. Reset my mixer back on medium. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla flavor. Now I'm adding a teaspoon and a half of vanilla flavor to this. Next, I'm going to add, I have two one ounce bottles of red food coloring. I'm going to add that to this. Now you have to take your time with baking. Baking is not something that you can rush. So you have to have your mind prepared as well as be prepared to just 
uh, sit there and do whatever is required when you're trying to bake, especially if you're trying to get perfection. Now I'm allowing these bottles to blend well with the mixture that I have down in my mixing bowl. This is my second one ounce bottle. Now when it comes to bacon, you really need to uh, follow the ingredients, whatever the ingredients are. With this you have a tutorial, but you need to follow it to the letter if you want to get the same results that the person showing you how to do it actually get. Now next, I have one tablespoon of white vinegar. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Now, you see that is mixed well. Now I'm going to start to add my dry ingredients. And I'm going to alternate with my dry ingredients. I'm going to put some dry ingredients. And then I'm going to put a little liquid, which is a little bit of my buttermilk. Down just a little bit just so and the only reason why I turned it down is because I didn't want all of that fluff see all of that uh, all of the film from the dry ingredients is coming up so I turn this down a little bit so I can get everything in more of my buttermilk my dry ingredients and I'm putting like two spatula fulls at a time between one and a half two spatula fulls more of my buttermilk this is a very moist cake if you cook this cake the way I'm showing you how to how to cook it bake it off the way I'm showing you to bake it off you gonna have a perfect cake every time I wanted to get this in before Thanksgiving. So if this is one of the things that you want to have on your Thanksgiving table, of course you can go ahead and do it. I also want to um, get in homemade dinner rolls. I'll probably be doing that next. And then I'll go back to one more cake. The last cake my daughter does, and she does it so well, it's... Uh, a cake where you take half of the batter and you make the frosting with it. And that cake is really good. It's unbelievable, but it's good. Because you wouldn't think that you could take half of the frosting and then make the cake with it. Now I am going to scrape my bowl down a mixing bowl. I'm going to scrape it down. But I wanted to get all of my ingredients in first. And then go back and put in whatever else. Now while my cake is baking off, then what I'm going to do is to show you how to make the frosting over because my counter is a little bit dirty and I got a thing with a dirty counter that is unbelievable now I'm going to stop this cake and I'm going to scrape my bowl just to make sure 
Let me get everything. While you're watching that blend, I'm gonna step away and get my cake pans. My oven is already preset at 350 degrees. I have my cake pans already ready to go. I'm gonna get them and then I'm gonna put this cake in the cake pan. Alright, because I don't want to overbeat my cake. Cake is ready. So I'm going to scrape down my beater. And I hope I'm able to get this cake in. I think my battery is running a little bit low, so... Hopefully, I'll be able to get it in before we'll lose any real, real time. Now, you can measure off in order to put in your cake pans, but I've been doing this cake for so long, doing cakes for so long, I can just tell you what's equal parts, pretty much. If you need to measure off, then you measure off, okay? I want to get every bit of my cake out of my bowl. Now you know you can make your cakes ahead of time, but this one we'll probably eat up tonight. <laughs> this one I won't worry about. And the richness of that cake is what makes this cake stand like you see it see how it's standing like whipped cream okay now i'm just going to spread this out in my pan and allow it to do what it does Like I tell you, I've been doing cakes for so long until, I mean, these cakes I can relatively do. Same thing for this pan. But you want to have equal amounts, which I have equal amounts. I can I measure. But you want to have equal amounts of cake in both pans. Okay. I'm an old school baker, so what I do is I take a little bit. See how I make that hole in the center? It's not really a hole, but I kind of push back on it. The reason why I push back on that is so a lot of times your cake will rise up in the center. That's just a little trick to prevent that. So you'll see me push back on it. And the same thing with this. Now, I'm going to bake these 30, 35 minutes uh, in my oven. Like I said, at 350 degrees. And when I get back, I'll show you what it looked like. In the meantime, we're going to put together the frosting for the cake while the cake is in the oven. Be okay, right back. now I'm at the stove because the first part of this frosting requires you to take a half cup of cold water. And to mix into that um, one heaping tablespoon full of cornstarch. Now, what you're going to do is I'm going to cook this on the stove, but I'm going to um, allow it to cook just until it thickens. Because this is the thickening agent that I will use trying to get all of that cornstarch out of there. I had to go in and get my finger. This is the thickening agent that I will use for the frosting. Okay? 
So this is one heaping teaspoon, I'm sorry, tablespoon full of cornstarch. I've dissolved it in this half cup of cold water. And now I'm just going to put this into this saucepan and I'm going to allow it to cook until it thickens. Now, that's going to be about two or three minutes, and all I'm going to be sitting here doing is just stirring this. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring you back as soon as this thickens up. I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back, and it has thickened. See here? See how it looks? Actually, it was about two minutes that it thickened. So now what I need this to do is to cool. So I'm going to allow this to cool while I prepare you for the next step. And probably before this cool, it'll be time to take that cake out of the oven because it is still in the oven. But you see how I got that? All that is is cornstarch and water. See? It's thick. So we'll let this cool because this is going to be the base for our red velvet cake frosting. Be right back. Okay, my cake's the beeper just went off, so I'm assuming that my cakes are ready. And I can test the cake. I have a skewer here. If you stick that cake and it comes back clean, there's no problem. That's just a little crumb. So if it comes back clean, then your cakes are done. Here is most of my cakes. Okay. Now, I can't frost it yet because as you know, I just finished this and this is still very hot in order to make the frosting. So I'm going to allow the cakes to cool. Cakes need to cool at least 10 minutes in the pan before you try to release them. So I'm going to allow these cakes to go ahead and cool. I'm going to remove them from the stove because the stove is hot. Set it over on my table or any place where it can cool. And then I'll bring you back when I get ready to make the frosting. Be right back. 